I'm Dr. Frida, and today I'm going to give you 10 causes of high blood pressure. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure? And if so, did you and your physician talk about the possible causes of the high blood pressure? Or did you just start taking medications without really asking questions? Now, the truth of the matter is that most cases of high blood pressure have no clear underlying cause. They have no clear etiology. This is primary or essential hypertension. But about five to 10% of the cases of high blood pressure do have an underlying cause, secondary hypertension. Now, if you have high blood pressure and it is actually caused by an underlying condition that could be potentially treatable or reversible, don't you wanna know? Stay with me then, because today I'm going to give you 10 causes of high blood pressure. Keep watching. I'm Dr. Frida. I'm a medical doctor who has been triple board certified in nephrology, internal medicine, and pediatrics. And today I'm going to give you 10 causes of hypertension. Now, hypertension is indeed the leading cause in heart disease, strokes, and kidney failure. And about 45% of Americans have high blood pressure and many of them don't quite have it managed well. Most hypertension is due to primary or essential hypertension, meaning that there is no clear cause, no underlying etiology to be identified, but about five to 10% of the cases of high blood pressure actually do have an underlying cause or secondary hypertension. And that's what we'll be talking about today. So first let's define what it means to have high blood pressure or hypertension. Optimal blood pressure is when the systolic blood pressure, that top number, is less than 120, and the diastolic blood pressure, the bottom number, is less than 80. If your systolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 130, and or the diastolic blood pressure is greater than or equal to 80, you have hypertension. And that's important to note because the definition of hypertension actually changed in 2017. So what can you do about it? Well, you definitely want to consult your physician, find out the diagnosis, and if you are a person who has an underlying cause, you want to know that as well. Now, everyone who has high blood pressure does not have to be screened for an underlying cause. But if you have these following characteristics, then you will have a greater chance of having a secondary cause or an underlying cause, and you should be screened. So. If you were diagnosed with high blood pressure at a young age, less than 30, and certainly if it's a pre-adolescent age, you should be screened for secondary causes of hypertension. If you were diagnosed a little bit later in life, like um, after the age of 45, you had normal blood pressure, all of a sudden it shot up and it's high, you should be screened. Also, if you are on many medications and it seems like no matter what, your blood pressure is extremely high, if it's extremely difficult to control, you should be screened. Also, if you have been on a blood pressure regimen that has been working for you quite nicely, but all of a sudden it stops working and your blood pressure shoots up, you should be screened for secondary causes of hypertension. So what are the causes of hypertension other than primary hypertension? Cause number one, thyroid disease. If you have an abnormal thyroid function, then this could be a cause of hypertension. So you could have hyperthyroidism, which is an overactive thyroid, and symptoms include things like a fast heart rate or unintentional weight loss. You can even get a bulging of the eyes, exophthalmos, and you may even have some change in your GI patterns, like you may get frequent stooling. This can happen with hyperthyroidism. Hypothyroidism can also be associated with hypertension. And with hypothyroidism, you have an underactive thyroid, a low functioning thyroid. And symptoms include slow heart rate, unintentional weight gain. You may even have some edema and fatigue. You can also get a loss of hair or thinning of the eyebrows, especially that tail, the outer eyebrow portion. So thyroid disease can be an underlying cause of high blood pressure. Number two, obstructive sleep apnea. So what are some signs and symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea? If you're a person who snores, or if you have times where you outright snore, 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 and then you stop breathing, you have apnea at night, you could have obstructive sleep apnea. Some symptoms are if you have increased somnolence during the day, or if you're just sleepy in the day all the time. Also, if you're getting headaches, this could be a symptom of obstructive sleep apnea. 
Typically patients with obstructive sleep apnea tend to have thick necks and they may be overweight, but you can also be a thin person and have obstructive sleep apnea. But this is definitely something that could be an underlying cause of high blood pressure. Number three, chronic kidney disease. Now I see this quite a bit because I am a board certified nephrologist. I'm a kidney doctor and a hypertension specialist. And so chronic kidney disease can be an underlying cause of hypertension. And there are several kinds. One, diabetic nephropathy associated with diabetes. You can also have what we call a glomerulonephritis like FSG or focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. This is another disease. It causes an inflammation in some of your kidney cells and it can be associated with hypertension. ADPKD, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. This is a condition where you get many, many, many abnormal cysts in the kidneys and it too can be associated with hypertension. And then you can have renovascular disease where you can get atherosclerosis, which causes plaques and a narrowing of the blood flow to the kidneys, a narrowing of the renal arteries. And this also can be associated with hypertension. Number four, elevated cortisol levels or Cushing's syndrome or Cushing's disease. Now, if you have elevated cortisol levels, this most certainly can lead to hypertension. You can have Cushing's disease, which means that you have a pituitary tumor that is causing you to make more cortisol, or you can have actually an excess of cortisol hormone coming from your adrenal glands. And your adrenal glands are those triangular glands that sit on top of your kidneys back in the flanks. Now, if you're making excess cortisol, this can lead to high blood pressure. It can also give you some other signs and symptoms as a bit of a hint that you might have it. So yes, you can have the very high blood pressure. You can also develop excess fat, especially in the stomach or even a round moon face or excess fat can develop on your back and they call that a buffalo hump. You can also develop excess insulin levels with this high cortisol. You can also get muscle weakness. But yes, another possible underlying cause of hypertension is Cushing's syndrome or Cushing's disease. Number five, elevated aldosterone levels or Kahn syndrome. In those same adrenal glands, there is a section that makes something called aldosterone. And aldosterone causes your kidneys to hold on to salt, hold on to water, and to get rid of potassium. One of the side effects of having excess aldosterone is high blood pressure. And it tends to be very high and very difficult to control with standard amounts of medications. Number six, brain tumor. Yes, a brain tumor can be an underlying cause of hypertension. Let me explain. If you have a brain tumor that's causing an increased pressure in your head, an increased intracranial pressure, it can lead to high blood pressure. You have to have a certain level of blood pressure in the body in order to perfuse the brain or to give the brain proper blood flow. So if a brain tumor is causing high intracranial pressure, high pressure within the brain, then your blood pressure has to be even higher. And this is something called a Cushing's reflex. It's different from the Cushing syndrome that we talked about earlier. So if you have high intracranial pressure from something like a brain tumor, you will get hypertension, you will get a slow heart rate or bradycardia, and you will also get abnormal breathing. Other brain issues other than just a brain tumor that can lead to hypertension are brain bleeds like a subarachnoid hemorrhage or even a stroke. Please be sure to watch my YouTube video on 10 high blood pressure symptoms you should never ignore after you finish watching this video. Number seven, coarctation of the aorta. Now, coarctation of the aorta is actually a congenital heart defect, and it's one of the leading causes of hypertension in children. When you have coarctation of the aorta, you have a narrowing in a part of the aorta, which is that huge artery. It's the body's largest artery, and it comes out of the heart, of, out of that left ventricle. When you have this narrowing, you can get symptoms such as hypertension, Specifically, you will have hypertension in the upper body, like you might have hypertension in the arms or headaches from high pressure in the brain. You can also get nosebleeds if you have coarctation of the aorta. And if someone checks your pulse, you might have bounding, very strong pulses, all of this in the upper extremities and then your radio pulses. But in the lower body, you may have diminished or absent pulses. You may have claudication or cramping of the legs. You may have relatively thin or decreased muscle in the lower body. So in coarctation of the aorta, you have hypertension, but mainly the hypertension is in the upper body. Number eight, pregnancy. 
pregnancy can lead to or worsen hypertension. So if you are a lady who already had hypertension prior to getting pregnant, pregnancy can make it worse. And if you are a lady who had no diagnosis of hypertension, you can get something called preeclampsia during pregnancy. With that preeclampsia, in addition to having high blood pressure, you may even develop some kidney problems such as protein in the urine, and you may even get some liver dysfunction. But you definitely want to be aware that pregnancy can be an underlying cause of hypertension. Number nine, obesity. Obesity can definitely be an underlying cause of hypertension. As you gain weight, as you become more and more obese, the amount of blood flowing through your arteries increases, and this can cause an increased pressure on your arteries, which can lead to hypertension. You can also get an increased heart rate when you are obese. And then being obese is also a risk factor for other underlying causes of hypertension, like diabetes, or it can put you at a higher risk for atherosclerotic disease, which can lead to plaques or blockages in your arteries, which can lead to high blood pressure or even renal vascular hypertension. So number nine, obesity. Number 10, drugs. Yes, drugs can be an underlying cause of hypertension, either prescription drugs or some illegal drugs. Some of the prescription drugs that can lead to high blood pressure include birth control pills, prednisone or a steroid that many people take. Even certain transplant medications can lead to hypertension. And then there are certainly illicit drugs which can lead to hypertension, such as cocaine or methamphetamines. In addition to the 10 causes of high blood pressure I just gave you, there are many more, including pheochromocytomia or a high sodium diet. In fact, please watch my video on controlling high blood pressure, 10 high sodium foods to avoid after you finish watching this video. In order to prevent high blood pressure, you definitely want to have a good relationship with your physician, so definitely consult your doctor. You also want to implement some excellent lifestyle choices. You want to exercise, you want to eat healthy foods, you want to make sure you drink plenty of water, and indeed, you do have that low sodium diet. And very importantly, if you are at risk for having a secondary cause, you want to make sure you explore the underlying causes of high blood pressure. If you found this video to be helpful, please be sure to like it and to share it with the people you care about. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification button so you'll be among the first to know when I release new medical content. Be sure you follow me on Instagram at dr.frida as well. I thank you for watching, I appreciate you for watching, and I want you to do your best to live your healthiest, happiest life. I'm Dr. Frida.